Hi friends, thank you for watching my video. Uh, my name is Simon Hunt and I'm here to talk to you about my book, which is called Lesser Magi. Uh, I know the title page is backwards, but uh, the title is backwards, but I really love this painting by an old friend of mine. So I'm showing you the cover, Lesser Magi Poems by Simon Hunt. Um, it's published by Hummingbird Press in Santa Cruz, California in the year 2018. Uh, if you're interested in getting my book or any of the books from Hummingbird Press, um, it's easy enough to Google them, Hummingbird Press, or you can contact, my e contact me by email at simon underscore hunt at msn.com. Um, I'll repeat that at the end when you, when you can maybe make a more educated decision. Um, but a, a quick word of, of uh, endorsement for Hummingbird Press. They specialize in books of poetry uh, by poets in the Monterey Bay area of California, Santa Cruz and Monterey, California, and the region in between the two uh, where I used to live. And, and so a lot of great poets in that area have published books with Hummingbird, Hummingbird Press. And my book is called Lesser Magi. Um, very briefly to introduce myself, I'm, a, I'm an English teacher. You can see I'm speaking to you from my classroom. Uh, I've been teaching English in one sense or another, one level or another, mostly in California for the last 30 years. Uh, but for the last three years or so, I've been teaching middle school in Las Vegas. So uh, greetings from a seventh grade classroom. Um, in terms of my life and my life in poetry, I'll tell you that I, I lived a pretty international life as a child. I was born in uh, a country used to be called Rhodesia. Now it's Zimbabwe, but it was, it was still Rhodesia when I was born there uh, and raised uh, briefly there for a couple of years in South Africa. And then mostly uh, going kind of going back and forth between uh, the United States, Florida and California, and also uh, the United Kingdom back and forth between California and England for the most part. Um, but for m most of my adult life, I've been in, in California and then the last three years in Nevada. Um, I'm a father of two children, a 21 year old daughter and a 16 year old son. And I've been writing poetry my whole life. Um, to tell you a little bit of the story of, of my relationship to poetry and especially the uh, kind of genesis of, of the book, Lesser Magi. Um, I would say that, you know, poetry has been something that's important to me my whole life. Um, and I've been writing almost as long as I can remember. Um, however, like a lot of people writing in the 20th century, uh, I've, I convinced myself that, you know, a lot of the things I loved about poetry, the, the, the rhyme, the meter, the traditional forms um, were kind of things of the, of the past. And I struggled to write what I saw as contemporary poetry, um, you know, the free verse that, uh, that was in vogue, uh, that has been in, largely in vogue in the 20th century. Um, and I came to a certain point about 20-ish years ago when I thought, wait a second, why why are almost all of the poems that I love traditional poems um, in meter, in rhyme, possibly in traditional forms, um, and yet the, po the poetry that I'm trying to write um, seldom has those same qualities. And so I kind of tried to bridge the two a little bit and make my own poetry a little more reflective of, of the, uh, the canon of, of English poetry that I loved so much. And it really, you know, that almost paradoxically freed me up a little bit. The, res the restrictions of form kind of freed me up as a writer. And from that point on, you know, I won't make any great claims for myself, um, but I think it's a pretty good book. Um, and definitely over the last 20 years or so, I've been uh, writing more and writing more happily and writing more successfully than ever before. Um, so, uh, if you were to read the book, you would see that uh, it's, uh, you know, predominantly poetry in meter and rhyme or poems in traditional forms. Not, not all of it, but the majority of the poems are rhymed and metered and, and, and um, in, in traditional forms. Um, and if I were to, if there were a concept, you know, if there's a concept behind the, the book and behind what I try to do with my poetry, it really has to do with taking those traditional uh, aspects of poetry, the sounds, the music, uh, the idea of form, the idea of rhyme, the idea of meter on the one hand, and then on the other hand, contemporary diction, contemporary subject matter, and kind of striking those two against each other to, to see what sparks. Um, so that's what I set out to do in the in my book, and I'd like to share a few of the poems in it with you. 
Uh, I'm gonna begin with a selection of four sonnets. Um, I'm sure most of you watching are, are familiar with the traditional form, the sonnet. And there are a lot of sonnets in the book. That's a form I, uh, in which I really like writing. So I'm gonna share with you four of the sonnets in the book. This is the opening poem in the book. It's, it's got a kind of uh, heavy title, a verbose title. So I'll give you the title twice. The title of this poem is Eve, Long Widowed, Confronts the Boys in Her Orchard. Eve, long widowed, confronts the boys in her orchard. That's right. The things your gossips say are real. I am a witch, and these are haunted walls. My husband brought us here to live and heal after the war, and in these silent halls we raised our sons and daughters, making sure to spare them cinema and roller skates. But towny chatter, vulgar and impure, seduced them down that drive and through those gates. They walked away and into worlds they made, Still, ghosts of our red setters roam this rough estate. And sometimes after dark, a shade howls through rose window glass. That's talk enough. It's time you climb the wall and head for town. First set the apples in your pockets down. Uh, the next poem I'm going to read is called Divorced. Um, a quick note on this one. Uh, uh, it's probably the poem that took me longest to write in the whole book. I was working on it a little bit at a time for, I swear it's true, 14 years, 14 lines, 14 years. Um, at the time I finished it, it, it uh, was not particularly autobiographical. Uh, it's a little more autobiographical now, I'm afraid to say, but, but uh, there it is. Um, so this is a sonnet called Divorced. Alone at last, he sits and counts his things. Three rooms, a gun, this silence, clothes, a shelf for books and music. Next to them, the rings, and carved from pine, a box he made himself. He'd meant it as a gift, but kept it when he left. Divorce preempted birthday. Now it stores his keys and watch, his change and pen, the pad he'd write on if he remembered how. He's drafted letters documenting scorn, but cannot now take aim. His hand just falls. He lists the children named but never born and writes her name, starts, stops, can't think, then scrawls, we ended things too slowly, but so soon. I miss you as the sun might miss the moon. And now I'd like to read the title poem of the book. Uh, this is called Lesser Magi. Uh, it's a love poem for, for my then wife. Um, I think many of you listening will recognize that the title refers to O. Henry's famous story, The Gifts of the Magi. Um, and uh, spoiler alert ahead, I'm going to tell you about that story in, in case you've never read it. Um, that's a short story where the poor, at Christmas, as Christmas is coming, the poor couple want to buy gifts for each other. The wife wants to get her husband a beautiful a uh, uh, platinum watch chain for his for the watch that he has, uh, and meanwhile the the husband wants to buy beautiful tortoiseshell combs for his wife's fabulous long hair. And so what he does is he pawns his watch to buy these gorgeous combs for her to put in her hair. Meanwhile, she has sold her hair to the wig makers to get the pawn to uh, excuse me to get the watch chain, so that on Christmas Day they present these gifts to each other for which they. No longer, no longer have any use. Um, but it's you know terribly beautiful, terribly sad, terribly ironic, 
great short story of O. Henry. Um, so the story in this poem is basically uh, my wife and I found we had bought each other exactly the same things for Christmas one year. And she looked at me and said, this is like that story except stupid. Uh, so for a little while, the poem was called Stupid Magi, and I thought I couldn't keep that title, and so it wound up being Lesser Magi, which is the, the title of the book, Lesser Magi. O. Henry's Magi gave their only treasures, his watch, her hair, to buy for Christmas Day the tortoise combs and fine watch chain that they had craved as more than just ironic pleasures. Of course, it doesn't matter that hair will grow again while watches pawned are not redeemed as often as they're sold. To them, it seemed they shared a richness few could ever know. Last Christmas, we swapped gifts with one another. You gave me tea and books then turned to see what I had brought for you, some books and tea. And then we wrapped the toys and called your mother. Is ours no tale if nothing dear is gone? Love, mark my place. I'll put the kettle on. And just one last sonnet before I, before I say a couple of different kinds of poems. Um, this is one called Aria. It's the closing poem in my book. Um, uh, it's about some friends of mine, uh, particularly in, in middle school. Um, and uh, I'll give you an explicit language warning. So cover your ears now if you have a problem with explicit language. Aria. We drank a quart of smuggled wine the day we ditched the opera. Fuck that noise, we cried. A toast to sucker classmates trapped inside some field trip gifted only matinee. Another time you plucked me from my bike, a tick before the school bus crushed its frame. You've paid death back this time, I guess. His name, I'm sure it was, but Michael, not just Mike, my mother said. They thought at first he'd live. A truck. I had to put my kids to bed. Now, linked to news, I pour some hometown red. Your death's online. I wonder what you'd give. My glass raised to the diva of way back when, to hear her now, or to have heard her then. Well, if you're still with me and not exactly sonneted out, I want to say a couple of other kinds of poems, um, just to show that there's some other things in the book. Um, two more poems from the book, and then, and then two newer poems. Uh, there's a set of poems in the book that respond to music in one way or another, rock music, folk music, punk rock music, um, different kinds of music that have been important to me in my life. Um, and in this one, I actually respond to a famous song you may be familiar with called Accentuate the Positive, um, a, an old, old sort of a show tune. Um, and I heard that as a child, uh, and in particular, its chorus stuck with me, Accentuate the Positive, eliminate the negative, latch on to the affirmative, and don't mess with Mr. In-Between. And um, maybe I was a weird child or something, but I always found that chorus very sinister, especially the introduction of this character, Mr. In-Between, who is he? Um, and so this is a poem you know, that I wrote quite recently, just a few years back, about Mr. In-Between. Um, that's the title of it, Mr. In-Between. Mr. In and so I imagine what he might say if he really existed. Just a short uh, eight-liner, Mr. In-Between. I'm neither that nor this, not six of one, no dozen halved. My sticks aren't stones and I roam neither day nor night. Unchanging, changing, gray. My name is neither Jack nor Jill. In latching on to what you will, when what you get's not what you see, 
it seldom pays to mess with me. And another poem um, from that section that's related to music. Um, this is a poem called Like a Bridge. I actually think it's the last written poem in the book. It's the most recent poem in the book, um, Like a Bridge. And it's another story that uh, kind of nostalgic story goes back to teenage years um, and then looks forward to the present. Like a Bridge. Before I knew I loved you, and some months before you felt you had to say you did not love me back. I grabbed your hand and pulled you past distracted bouncers down to where the VIPs got folding chairs. We heard a song or two before they kicked us out and back upstairs. Still hand in hand, we gazed upon the man who sang your favorite one a song already old by then, the 83 reunion. And how much older it seems now, as I at 50 sing along with art on my car radio. I've got my hands at 10 and two, but even so I can't forget the way your right felt in my left and how he sounded on the night the sidekick to the one thought great. He stole the show with that one song. I'll Google you when I get home. I hope you're well and not alone. I hope you've got your radio on. So that's a selection of poems from my book, Lesser Magi, uh, a handful of sonnets and a couple of other poems. Um, but I know I'm not the only writer who's always most excited about the, the stuff I'm working on lately. Um, so I'd like to finish up, I think, with two newer poems, um, which will be in my next book, which um, touch wood with any luck will be coming out next year in 2021. Um, so first, uh, a short metrical poem just, for, just a four-liner called Gravity. My daughter slipped beside a swimming pool. I watched her hit the tiles, fall in, go under. I walk her and her two black eyes to school. Our neighbors look from her to me and wonder. And then the last poem I'll say to, uh, as part of this video is a free verse poem just to show that I don't always write in, free, in, in rhyme and meter. And also because this is a very recent poem and a poem that's a tribute to my uh, beloved 91-year-old uncle. Um, so this poem is called Smith, Serena Road, Santa Barbara, 2019. Smith, Serena Road, Santa Barbara, 2019. The fire comes over the peak just after dark. It's November, but they come more often now. He sees the orange glow from the parking lot of the restaurant where he has eaten Mondays for 50 years. It's his 91st birthday. At home, the TV is on for fire updates, but his eyes are on the hill. Last month, he scattered there the ashes of his wife. Their marriage was long, childless, and joyful. He watches her cremated again. The neighbors call between nine and 12 in case he is asleep. 
They all want him to leave with them, should it come to that, say, to drive through smoke to the home of their grown child he held when she was born. He preps an evac box. He starts with photographs, himself newborn on Easter Island, his fur trader pals in the Arctic Circle, his parents and brother long ago at home in Stornoway, Kathleen at the beginning and at the end. Next, her false teeth, because what the hell do you do with those? when you can't bear to throw them away. Then a pocket knife he bought, demobbed in Inverness in 1946, that he sharpens twice a year. The barbering tools he mastered on the Alberta oil fields, packed away for decades now. A man needs a way to earn a living. You just never know. The space that's left, he fills with clocks and watches. The neighborhood, the garden where he spends his days, the house. They can't be saved when the flames come to town this time or the next. But there are hours of comfort in the taking apart and putting together. Some keep good time, some don't. Well, those are the poems that I'm gonna present as part of this video. I wanna thank you all for joining me um, uh, and a special thanks to anyone who's made it to the end. I appreciate your listening to me. Um, again, my name is Simon Hunt and my book is called Lesser Magi. The cover looks like this. It came out with Hummingbird Press, Santa Cruz, California in 2018. Uh, they are easily Google, Googleable on the web, Hummingbird Press, and I recommend that you check them out and, and see some of the other writers. Um, if you should be moved to want to get a, get a copy of my book or just to make contact with me and tell me that you watch this video, uh, I would love that. The easiest way to get the book is to write to me directly. And so I'm going to finish this uh, video by saying my email a couple of times. Uh, it is simon underscore hunt at msn.com. Capital S-I-M-O-N underscore H-U-N-T at msn.com. Simon underscore hunt at msn.com. Uh, again, my thanks to all involved in putting this program together and especially to you for watching my video. Bye-bye.